Hi everybody and welcome to a quick overview of ProGrids version 2.1. So this is just another tool in the ProCore toolset, but one of the ones that we find to be key to pretty much all development in Unity in that it gives you full 3D world grids and snapping. So that might sound a little bit um, uncertain on what exactly it means, but basically it means that whenever you are building something, you know exactly where it is. So this is fundamentals of pretty much all 3D tools uh, and other game engines and such, but uh, ProGrids brings it into Unity for you. With ProGrids, everything that you move in the editor is snapped exactly onto the world grid as long as you have the ProGrids toggle turned on. With it off, of course everything moves as normal and turn it back on and it'll snap right back to it. So this means, especially when you're building something using modular assets or anything that needs to snap together and be at exact positions, you can expect where it's going to be. There's no more worrying and trying to figure out if it is or isn't or if you have tiny gaps or anything. ProGrids just make sure it is right where it ought to be. So again, very handy for modular assets. Of course, it's also extremely useful for ProBuilder. In this case, I already have that open and editing this. I can very simply build and move things around and know while I'm building it that it is exactly on the grid, which is extremely handy, especially in early prototyping stages and such, so that I can make sure everything is coming together properly. Nothing too special about it, but extremely handy and will really come in handy uh, or be useful in just about every aspect of development. So looking at a little more on how this works. Let's just bring this back to the center of the grid here. We'll move right down the GUI from top to bottom. So first of all you have the grid size setting or the snap size here. And you can set that on the fly to any any number you like. Right now this is in the default uh, units which is meters in Unity and you can change that in the preferences panel which will show a little later on so that you can use anything from feet to inches, yards, millimeters, centimeters there's a whole bunch of different options in there you can set it as you need it for your project. This is a good place to mention one of the best additions in version 2.1 so just to show this in action I'll move this off the grid a little bit and then we'll set this to a larger grid size and with the grid back on, in this case, if I wanted to move this object only, um, only snapping on the grid in one direction, I can hold down X on the keyboard. And when I move it with a certain axis selected, it will only snap on that axis. So that's extremely handy when you have items that aren't exactly on all three uh, axes. You can just snap on one at a time if you need to. Move that back in here. So of course there's the toggle on and off area there, then you can toggle on and off the visibility of the grid. Then below that is the toggle for the angle guidelines and the degrees that you can set there. Below that we have the snap objects to grid button. So this, let's say I take a couple objects and move them off the grid or they're off the grid or I'm not sure if they are either way. I can select all of them. Whether or not the grid is set to on, click Snap Objects to Grid, and they're instantly snapped right to it. So you know for sure that they are 100% on the grid. We'll just delete these extras, bring this back to the center with the grid on. So that's it for the basic items up here, and then we have all the new and exciting um, perspective items that we've added for ProGrids version 2.1. Users of previous versions of ProGrids will notice or have noticed that we now have this awesome perspective grid going on, not only in the orthographic views, we now have a full grid in the perspective and isometric. So you can control exactly how this looks by using either the X grid, the Y grid, or the Z grid. So you can turn these on and off, these are just the regular planar grids. Also we have the toggle for the follow or lock grid. So in this case, if you need to lock the grid to a specific point, I'll actually turn this off. So now it shows a lock icon and I can move this around and the perspective grid, not the orth orthographic grids, of course, just these perspective grid stays in one place. If I set it to follow, then the grid is going to follow it wherever it moves in the X, Y, or Z. Below that, we then have the brand new 3D grid. This is especially useful and awesome to use. If you move it around, you can really see the lock and unlock working. 
put that back to locked, and I can move around and the grid stays where it is. This is especially handy when you really need to gauge the depth or uh, distances in scenes. See exactly how far up, down, left, right, etc. an object is, and snap it easily with the full 3D grid to let you know where everything is. We've also added in some keyboard shortcuts in this version. So going back to the regular Y grid, I can now change the size of the grid just by using the plus and minus keys on the keyboard. Very simple to quickly move that around. I can also nudge the grid up and down or in any direction perpendicular to the current version. So on the Y, it goes up and down. And then of course in the X, it would go left and right. And the Z, forward and backward. So that way you can move the grid along or grid around as long as it's in the locked mode. Of course, in the unlocked, it's going to be following the object that you have selected. So the nudge keys won't work. Lastly, I want to make sure everyone knows that we have the uh, preferences under edit and then preferences and then click on the pro grids panel. So here we have quite a few preferences that you can change, mainly of course the colors and opacities for the grid lines. You can change the color to whatever you want as long as, as well as the opacity for all three axes. And then the tenth line alpha so that you can, if you like to, see a little more uh, info on the distance as you're moving things around. Then there is the grid increment value, which is going to be exactly how much it moves up and down when you nudge it, or how much that the uh, snap size changes when you're using the plus and minus keyboard shortcuts. Here we also have the grid units, which we've moved out of the GUI. It didn't make sense to be there since I'm sure people change that very rarely. And you have meters, centimeters, millimeters, etc., uh, as well as inch, foot, yard, and parsec in case you need any of those. Lastly, we decided to make an option to set the default for the snap method. So this can either be snap on all axes or snap only on the selected axis. And just as I was showing before, if you hold down the X key, it simply toggles to the opposite version while you have that held down. So you can choose what you want the default value to be, and then X will always toggle to the opposite of that. Lastly, of course, here, there is the reset button, which will reset all of these to the default ProGrids values. And that's it for ProGrids version 2.1. We know that this is a very simple seeming tool, but especially if you check out the reviews for it on the Asset Store, uh, people seem to agree. It really is crucial to working in Unity and making sure you, your workflow is fast and quick uh, and just helps build quality as well since you never have to worry about things being off. You don't spend time or waste time fixing and checking, and you can instead spend time just making things better. So thanks for watching, and of course, send us any feedback or input you have on this. Uh, we are really hoping and looking forward to seeing what everyone thinks of the new perspective grid, keyboard shortcuts, and all the other goodies we've added here in 2.1. So thanks, everyone, and um, see you in the future updates.